Hey guys, behind me is a 2018 Chevy Silverado. In today's video, I'm going to review it. I'm gonna go over some of the features of this truck, but I also wanna talk about the longevity, the durability, the reliability of this truck after 42,000 miles. I thought it was a good idea to revisit this truck because the used truck market right now is crazy with the shortage of new vehicles. Uh, these trucks have gone up in value a lot. You can find one of these for about $35,000 when it was bought new. It has an MSRP of $49,000, I think, a little bit over it. And my friend was able to get it for with uh, over $10,000 worth of rebates. So imagine three years later, 42,000 miles later, and he drove this car for about $5,000, which is great, right? Okay, let's start with the front end. I really like this front end. It's very boxy, very good looking. This particular model has aged really, really well. In this case, we're talking about the LT version, which has a lot of upgrades. It has these cool HIDs, it has uh, LED running light lights, and it also has this fog lights right here. There's pros and cons about, about trucks as they get more modern, and it's, you know, they start adding this all these things to add to the aerodynamics of this vehicle because miles per gallon is very important in these trucks but what it does at the same time it reduces the axis angles of what is supposed to be an off-road truck this is a four x four with very low clearance all this uh these mud guards affect the overall height of this vehicle as well as these running boards that do help you access the vehicle but at the same time it brings other issues with it such as very low, very low ground clearance, especially with these trucks as they get longer, the distance between axles affects everything about the off-roadability of this truck because at the end of the day, even though it says four by four here, the overall ground clearance of this vehicle is not great. So that's why a lot of people, when they buy these cars or these trucks, they usually opt to lift the trucks because of the same reason. But one advantage of this running boards is that it helps you access what it is, a tall, a taller vehicle. As you can see here, after so many years, this becomes an issue with this truck. Also, when you, for, when you work your way to the truck, handling this or the steering wheel, you start stabbing this bolster with your, with your elbow if you're not that tall. I mean, I'm 5'11", so I, I'm not that short, but I still find it that most of the time, even as I try to clear this with my butt, I still rub it, you know, and years and years of this starts messing this uh, bolster. It has held up pretty good, but as you can see, you can see signs of wear and tear. We're gonna revisit the interior in a little bit. Um, I wanna still talk about things with the exterior. Uh, as I said, I really like this style of truck. Silverado used to mean something different back in the day. This is only in its fourth generation, but before the name Silverado meant you had the top of the line Chevy truck. And then I think it was at the turn of the century that they decided to make all the Chevrolet trucks named Silverado. And they started with the trim level, the LS, and then the LT, the LTC, and, and on and on and on. But what I like about this body style is this flares right here help out a lot because as you can see, these are 18 inch wheels with 265s and they feel the wheel well really well. But even if you try to go bigger, these flares help out being able to make room for bigger wheel selections. And then as you come to the back, you have incandescent tail lights here. And one thing that a lot of trucks are doing, as I mentioned earlier, they start making things to make it more accessible for the average person with this step right here, which I think is very convenient to climb up the back. In this case, this truck doesn't have a bed liner, which I highly suggest because look, you start seeing all these scuff marks with this just a general use. This beautiful, I think it looks greenish to me, but I think it's called a some sort of blue. As you move to the back of the truck, you can see this has the rear view camera, and then you have this as part of the towing package, which I think is pretty convenient. This truck is actually useful for what it's meant um, the owner, my best friend, he has um, a trailer with desert toys and all that. So uh, we've driven this many, many times throughout the year to camping sites. It has a rear locking differential as part of an upgrade package, and it has an independent suspension in the front. I really like how they went really aggressive with the hood. If you see here, it has these nice humps, these lines that extend 
from the front all the way to the back that just offer a very good look. I don't know if it helps out for aerodynamics, but it definitely looks nice. You have color match mirrors. It's part of option packages. This vehicle was sold or it was MSRP for about $50,000 when it was sold new. And um, it's just full of options. I think this offers a perfect blend between value, convenience, and luxury. Under the hood for 2018, you have a 5.3 V8 that delivers 355 horsepower and 383 pounds pedal torque. The very stock engine is a 4.3 V6. And then you have the top of the line 6.2 that brings 420 horsepower and 460 pounds pedal torque. It's a great engine. I think it has the right, right amount of power. Unfortunately, I think that the transmission is a letdown. It's a six-speed automatic transmission. In my experience with this transmission in this truck and other um, Chevy products, it's just a little bit jerky, especially downshifting from like third to second. Um, you can hear like a clunk. And also what I noticed about this transmission is that sometimes when you're between like third and fourth, you come to flat spots of power delivery. So um, it's kind of annoying, but it is, a, it is a truck, not a race car, but I do notice that laggy transmission. Um, this truck is, us is used for towing. So with this truck, we tow a toy hauler that at, when it's loaded to capacity, it's at around 8,500 pounds. And I think this truck is rated at 9,500 pounds. And it does really, really well. It's a very strong engine, I like it. I mean, granted, it's still a gasoline engine. It's not a diesel, but it still, it still does really well. You can see the struggles here. That's damage from back in the day that we went to Baja and we towed something and then we hit it with the trailer. In general, it's been a great ownership experience. Uh, the owner's pretty happy with it. It's just crazy with this used car market, how I was looking it up on CarMax and people are paying uh, mid uh, 30s for a truck that when my buddy bought it, he, he bought it for uh, $40,000 with rebates. It was slightly under, oh, under 40, it was 39.5 or something like that. This instrument panel looks really good, I think just like the rest of the vehicle, it has aged really well. You have this fake aluminum trim here that adds to the look of something utilitarian. You have some hard plastics here, but it comes with the territory. This is what trucks are. And when it comes to the doors, you have some softer injected molding here, and then this soft vinyl, and then these rest areas are, are okay. And then the steering wheel is leather wrapped. It's part of a package that is particular to this truck. And then I'm very familiar with this four by four selector. You start at the just regular two wheel drive and then you can put an auto. This is not my favorite because sometimes you forget that you're on auto and it, the transfer case may go a little crazy trying to figure out what you want to do. Um, I hardly ever use it here. I either go from two wheel drive to four high, which is my favorite choice. And I don't use the four low unless I really have something going on. And what I notice about this system is that sometimes in order to go from four high to four low, you have to put the vehicle on neutral. And that's when the four by four makes the transition. And I hope you could see that, that blinking light to see what I mean. Um, and then you have the stability control um, monitor right here, which is right here underneath the center console. And you can activate it or deactivate it there but let's go back to two-wheel drive and sometimes as i said you have to be in neutral to be able to disengage the four low that i hardly ever use sometimes when i'm in very soft uh, sand i do have a need for the four low but for the most part i don't use it and then you have this this for the towing mode when you have that trailer and then it informs you here in the center um, information display and then you could tell, you could say that you have this manual control over your transmission. For that, you have to go to for low. I'm, I'm sorry, you have to go to low. And then while you're in low, you can see there that you can see that number up here. It does the L1. And then you can go up and down the gears. This is not for racing. This is more like when you are towing with something really heavy and you have you want to have a little bit more control over your own gears 
Um, but at some point, it will move the gears for you. It will overwrite your commands just for, I'm guessing, for uh, to prevent damage to the transmission. And then you have these vertical AC vents. I'm, I don't love them. That's just, it is what it is. It comes with the truck mainly because the choices are limited because of what they did with the center console. And then in the center, you have this eight inch display. It's good for the segment. It's good for the year it came. And if you were one of the lucky ones that bought the 2018, your car came stock with the rear view camera, which is not the case for the three years prior uh, within this generation. So the, the rear view camera is very decent. And other than that, the dual climate controls is pretty cool with digital displays here. And then you have that, that glove compartment here. It opens two ways, the top one and then the bottom. And then when it comes to the doors, I, I like it. I like the quality. This has this soft injected molding, which I think is good for the segment. Remember, it's a truck. So some areas of this feel a little cheap, but I think they dressed up this interior well enough and another thing that i wanted to mention is this is a common issue with this generation model is that this becomes undone um, i guess what he was told at the dealership is that this the screws which which they stick this are too short so he has to take it back in so they can put it back so these are some of the issues that you deal with with general motors products is sometimes um, there's some cost cutting measures and then you can see cheap stuff um, what I like about this truck is that this particular package comes with uh, one-touch windows for all four windows, and I think that's pretty cool. And then you have these automatic lights. I usually leave it on auto. I, I really like this interior. I think it has aged really, really well. Um, you can option this truck to come with Apple CarPlay if you want to pay extra. This doesn't come with it, but it does come with Bluetooth. And it also comes with USB ports and plenty of chargers throughout. The seats are very comfortable. I really like these bucket seats. It's part of a package. This is not the stock seat. And then this center console turns into a seat and you turn it when you move it up. You hardly ever use this, but it's there and you need to use it. And then you have plenty, plenty of storage material here, three cup holders. And then this particular trim level comes with a power seat for the driver, not so much for the passenger. When it comes to the back seat, it is roomy enough. I'm about 5'11", if I need to repeat that information so that you get an idea of how roomy this is. I have plenty of room here. The seats don't recline, but it is still very comfortable. Um, then here on the doors, you don't have that injected molding that you get on the front doors. You get just hard plastic and then just imitation aluminum like you find in the front and then pockets for storage here which is pretty cool and then you have some map pockets here in the back and then you have a 12 volt charger right here or outlet i'm sorry and you don't have any any ac controls on the back so you just gotta rely on the people in the front to hook you up with ac for the back and then what i like about this roof is that you have these indentations for extra headroom, and then you also have them in the front. Driving the 2018 Chevy Silverado truck. This is a great driving experience. Uh, for those of you that are not truck people, uh, you need to realize that there's a reason why people love trucks. The sitting position is high, the visibility is great. Something that we have lost throughout the years in modern cars is the visibility. But this upright sitting position with these huge windows, uh, you're sitting literally above traffic. So it gives you that boost of confidence when you're driving. I have driven the fifth generation, which is the latest generation uh, Silverado. And I find that to be a little bit more wobbly than this. The suspension is really soft. I'm thinking it is for comfort, but I think they went too far. This is soft, but at the same time it's firm and it's comfortable, especially for longer drives. It, the suspension is an, it's an independent front suspension and it's a solid axle in the back. And I think the suspension absorbs the imperfections of the road really well. And something I really like about this particular trim level is that it has 18 inch wheels. It doesn't go overly crazy with tire sizes. When you start getting bigger, you start getting a little bit less sidewall and that makes for a bumpier ride. And you need to have the right amount of sidewall 
to absorb the road imperfections. And in this case, I think this 18 inch wheels do that perfectly. This truck comes stock with 17 inch wheels, but I think those tend to be a little bit on the smaller side because of the waistline of the truck and how big the wheel wells are. So at 18 inch uh, wheels, you find that right blend, which they fill the wheel wells really well, but at the same time, um, they look good and they offer the right road imperfection absorption that you would expect from a truck. As far as the 5.3, I find this engine to be very, very good in power. And as I mentioned earlier, I do think that the transmission is a little bit of a letdown. It's a six speed automatic transmission. And I found that transmission to be a little bit bumpy when it's uh, downshifting. I think it's from third to second. You can hear a little bit of a clunk. <laughs> in time you get used to it and the owner of this of this truck my best friend he was telling me that he's just used to it and something else is when i drive this truck sometimes between third and fourth i find some flat spots of uh, in the power deliveries it's not very responsive the transmission is not very responsive i think the engine is pretty powerful but if you don't if you don't uh, find the right gear uh, you may find yourself in a flat spot with lack of power is a little bit sluggish I, I would say but for the most part it's a it's a very um, good responsive transmission from the get-go it is more when you're trying to pass sometimes or you start going uphill that sometimes the transmission struggles a little bit to find the right gear to get the most out of the power band of this of this awesome 5.3 engine and see like right there i think i was in third and then it was a very a little bit sluggish and then it had it had problems transitioning to the next gear and it kind of danced between i think it was uh third and fourth but it is what it is i I've, I've gotten used to this to this powertrain so much that i just know what the i can predict what the truck is going to do when i press on the on the gas pedal depending on the situation and the speed i'm going um, I can I know that it's gonna do that exact thing that it did right now Whatever your reason was that brought you to watch this video Whether it's because you own one of these trucks and want to know what other owners are experiencing or you you're in the market for a used truck I, I'm really thankful for your presence here um, I make videos about cars just everyday cars and if you find value in this video I would like to invite you to subscribe to my channel and maybe hit that like button and maybe drop me a comment that is the best way to support my channel thank you for watching and i'll see you next time